So we're here today at um, Benchmark's Head Office and Swords to look at a branded version of our Workshop Manager E3 Technical. It's been branded as Top Part because we have a team going to the Top Part trade show in Tralee and Kerry this week. And thankfully our partners at CarWeb have sent Dennis across, our resident technical expert, to introduce us to Top Part's E3 Technical. Um, and for viewers of the blog, we're going to spend 10 minutes running through it quickly because there's some really exciting new features on here with regards to online quotations that includes the top part catalog that Dennis is going to take us through. So it's taken us 10 minutes to get everything set up, Dennis. Fingers crossed the computer isn't going to break down on us again like it has <laughs> in previous trials. But would you give us a quick walk through the basic functions of E3? Yep, no problem. On E3, um, on the top part, all you do is put your registration number of the car, which I've already done, up in the top screen, search for it, and it comes down with all the car information that you want, engine numbers and what type of car it is. Okay, stick on to do technical data. And that first screen obviously is really important because it gives the VIN number and some other That's useful it, yeah. technical information that people look up. Right. First thing we do is have a quick look at the adjustments. On the adjustments. You have, informa oh, come on, come on. you have information like engine information, engine codes and etc. all come up automatically because you've got the registration number in. You have belt layouts, so you can have all your auxiliary belt layouts information. Torque settings, which everybody wants, we have all torque settings that goes all the way down the system. Wheel nuts, all the way down, yeah, yeah. all the way down to the bottom there. And some diagrams there to demonstrate where that's what they're talking about. On the maintenance screen, you have all the service maintenance and uh, schedules on the car. So let me just confirm again, Dennis, for, for anybody who's not familiar with um, top part or systems like this. Hmm. This is a tool for non-franchise dealers who want to be able to service or maintain any make or model of car. Is that right? That's it. Yeah, that's exactly what it's for. And all of the information we have on here is the manufacturer's recommended Dash, yeah. information for service. All the manufacturer's recommendations. You have the service goes, we've got an 09 plate car all the service intervals for the older cars there. You have the service indicator resets, key programming if it's got it, maintenance guide, just gives you a quick guide of what's going to be happening in some of the maintenance schedules. What we're going to do is we're going to go down to the 12,000, which you won't see, but we'll just use it as an example. Okay, okay on our screen, we come to a default screen. You have all the systems ticked, so you can see the times and all the other data on it. Please excuse me. Um, tells you that the Cam belt should be done at 125,000 miles, um, and it goes down. You've got a tick sheet all the way down to what picture you have in there. Almost a job card. It is a is a it's a tick sheet job sheet for any servicing. Mm. I'll explain that in a second. All the way down on this, you'll have these little green symbols. If you can see those ones, mm -hmm. lubricants. If you click on these, you've got the green symbol for lubricants. You've got the settings and times. If you're doing brakes, for instance, you can sit there, and you click onto this. And then it'll automatically come up to the, the disc thicknesses and allowances and the minimum wear mm. tear on the discs. Okay, so if you want that information, it's already there for you. Okay, for um, workshop use, untick the it items. Yeah, and it goes to a printable size, and then the mechanic can tick down all the things that he's checked and done. Okay, all the way down to the screen. It also has a body check, also has a tyre depths. A little comments box and a nice little signature for a technician to say that he's done the job. And that's really important where block exemption uh, proves that you need to maintain the vehicle that's with it, parts yeah. of equal quality it's, and as per the it's there for It's there for the um, customer as well to actually prove that the service is done and he's signed it to prove that he's checked everything off. Mm. Etc. What we also have, which we have, uh, uh, I'm just trying to think this best one to go to, drawing information. On the drawing information, you'll have. You have drawings and setups of different systems. This is a brake system, so you get a breakdown of what this brake system looks like. And you click on any other diagrams, it always come up. And what happens, you can see all the nuts and bolts and what the actual torque tightens on all the bolts are. Mm -hmm. In case it's a quicker reference to actually find out where they are, that works it out. And most people as well, the other one is the air conditioning system, where you can actually see where all the actual filling points are on the air conditioning system, because sometimes they're buried and you can't see them anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Um, one of the other nicest things what we have, we have a procedure system. Okay, if you go into the procedure system, you have a list of procedures. Uh, some of these might seem not important. Battery procedure. You click on battery procedure, it tells you all the other things that you do when you disconnect or reconnect the battery. On some vehicles, they have to be reset by a manufacturer's computer. So this sort of thing on uh, most cars might be worth checking before you disconnect it because sometimes you might not be able to restart the car again. Right. Okay, um, but um, it, you've got things like timing belt procedures. With this one, it'd go down and give you the whole procedure of how the belt's set up, what to remove, what to replace, all the way down. Also, uh, giving you details of some special tools. Um, and right at the bottom of the page, it actually gives you a list of the special tools needed to do the job. That's uh, one of the procedures we get. Dennis, you're taking um, support calls from mechanics and technicians all over the UK and Ireland on this yep. system every day. What particular section, in your opinion, is the most impressive or the one that the, the mechanics will refer to the most? <laughs> the one of the mechanics refer to the most would be the fork diagnostics. This is where this system is, uh, is a lot better for the mechanic because um, he doesn't need to remember everything underneath the sun to diagnose faults, if anything. Um, so we'll have a quick look at the diagnostics. Which says the CAN bus. So it has all the information, all the stuff that's going into the injection computer and all the stuff and all the information coming out of the injection computer. But um, for anybody who gets any problems, what they do is they go up to fork diagnostics. When you go to fork diagnostics, you get like a, a few travel codes or something like that will come through. Um, so it, this will actually accept a couple of um, problem codes. If you want to boot, do more than one, all you do is just stick a comma in between the code si signal. Um, so and when you actually search the codes, it will give you a nice little list of the codes. So you've got uh, EGR flow and turbo pressure control. If you mistakenly put one on, you can just delete one off, it's not a problem. So if you've got an EGR flow problem, a lot of people will sit there and think, oh, it's the EGR valve at fault. Mm. And that's what most other manufacturers will probably do, and they stop at that point. But what we do is we have this show diagnostic point. When I click on show diagnostics, it tells you what can cause, possibly cause, an EGR flow problem. Okay. okay. So it says that the MAP sensor, the mass airflow sensor, or EGR control solenoid position sensor can all cause flow problems. Um, most mechanics will sit there and go, what to do next? But if we just stick on one of the little steps that we have, so this system will actually tell the mechanic how to um, diagnose the problem? Yeah, it, it, it guides rather than tells. It guides them where to check everything out. And what you have is you have a little diagram here which tells you there's your map sensor, there's the engine control unit, and it's a basic wiring diagram mm -hmm. to show what's what. But what's important, on this side here we have like check sensor signal, uh, check the supply on the pin. What happened that at this point is you get a little multimeter come up in the diagram and it actually not only does it tell you where to put the pins but it also shows you where to put the pins and it tells you uh, you've got a, a reading up here but the true reading is up here so you should, you should be getting between 4.8 volts and 5.2. Okay. Yeah. If you are, you tick the yes button. It says the map sensor has passed this test. If you say no, it then says check this and the diagram will actually change as well. So you sit there and go yes or no, but for this purpose we're going to sit there and go yeah that's alright. And then you go down to the next test, so now it changes again and you're testing the other circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now if, if, if for instance all this test comes up okay, it's not a problem, it just means that that's working. But because you had three possible units, you just click down the bottom on this one and it then goes over. changes the diagram yet again to the new unit that you're checking. Okay? And the same thing again. Diagnostic comes up, little diagram saying where to actually uh, connect all the cables and etc. Okay? And again, step by step, yes or no answers. You can't really get any more simple than that. Super. And that covers all sorts of uh, engine faults and fault codes yeah. that these units I mean if it, I mean worst case scenario on anything is if if um, you check all the units and they're all okay. So now you want to check the main computer unit. All you have to do is just highlight on the screen you've got the uh, engine control unit. If you just click on the engine control unit, the screen will then change round. And then 
come up with a display of what the uh, plug on the uh, engine computer, management computer, and then give you a list, again, of little units and little wires to check to make sure everything's coming up to there, and it's a yes or no box. This is a very rare thing for any of the units to go wrong. At this point here, you're just making sure that there's any poor connections rather than anything else. If you do get a car that's got a complaint um, and there's no fault codes, and being the mechanics that you are, you sort of sit there and you go, okay, I think it could be something else wrong. So you end up going back to the actual, the CAN bus unit, and you think it might be the crankshaft position sensor that's faulty because it's not starting, for instance. You can just click that without any fault codes, and it comes up with a little diagram and also all your little checks to check and where to check it all. So all that information is there. It's a simple little device and it's just, you know, gives mm. it a little bit of extra thing. Now, we don't have time to go through everything, unfortunately, because you could spend the day here, and I know you have done in Tralee, and uh, spending hours at demonstrating it, but um, the reason that top part have shown an interest the latest the version has provided for something called online quotations. Yeah. Would you mind taking us through a quick I'll do a quick one on the online quotations. It's at the top there. It's a, it's a lovely little tool to have, especially if you get somebody who just comes into the um, workshop. If I come into your workshop and give you my car registration number, um, you sit there and I go, how much for a set of pads? Yeah, they need mm -hmm. replacing. You just go to build a quote on the system. <laughs> okay, and uh, just for a quick search, yeah, we just sit there and go pads. And on the system, you know, you're going to check for brake pads, so you just click on the brake pads, and we got brake pads. And we're going to say front brake pads just for the case of arguments. You haven't you haven't actually physically looked at the brake pads. It's just I've come in. Can you check my brake pads? We're busy at the moment, but can you come back tomorrow or mm -hmm. whatever? But he wants to know what sort of price. What happens is the labour rate is set further back, but we've set this at 35 at the moment. Mm -hmm. It also comes up with a time for you to how much the set of brake pads and actually works it all out. The only thing that's missing off of here is price. But if you select on the actual parts prices, this is the thing that we're hoping to actually ascertain. It gives you a price, cap, uh, price catalog and you select the right rate pads for your car. Okay, so it's actually told you how long it's going to take to change the pads in this particular yep. vehicle by its registration number. Yep. And now it's drilled directly into the top part catalog, yep. allowing you to price the pads do the whole thing, yep. essentially menu pricing, but that's really it. Yeah. <laughs> what will happen is, is it'll give you the price up there, it'll give you the outcome. You can then tell me that would be 78 pounds, 78 euros, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I then sit there and go, okay, I'll be back tomorrow, you can save this quote, you don't need to do anything. You just put my information here, click the save, and job done. Hopefully, in the future, what we're going to have, we're going to have an order button that's going to be down here, so order parts may or may not be ordered, it'll be done by email, so okay. all the parts done. So you've got no 10, 15 minutes on the phone waiting to find out the prices of pads. If by the next day, for instance, I'd come back in, this will save it for 30 days. If I don't come back after 30 days, it just loses it. It just chucks it off the system because it's not used. But if I do come back the next day and one of your mechanics look at it and go, the discs are worn, there's no problem. You just come back up here and you see on a little tick box, renew by front discs. Click on that. And what happens is it comes up for a time for replacing both front discs. The time is already reduced because you have already stripped out the pads to actually find that information. So you've done most of the work. And the same again. You click onto the parts. It goes to the pricing catalogue. Yeah, and you click onto the discs. Press the select. But if you notice this here, the, the prices are for single discs. Okay. They're not sold in pairs. So whatever the price is, you have to actually convert that over. Multiply by four or two or however yeah, many you need. Yeah, 400 if you want to. Mm. Okay, so what we do is we're going to do the disc, go and multiply it by two. It will automatically change the cost as well for you, down the bottom here. Yeah, if for some reason you're thinking, well, they sort of prices are, need to be changed slightly, you can, if you want to give a discount, you can actually just override the price of the pads or discs or pads or whatever to a, uh, to a price of your liking, should we say. And at this point, because you modify it yourself, you have to press refresh, and it will actually just change and give you the cost of the actual unit there. So you can then sit there, ring me up, and say, this is how much it is, even before you order them. You haven't, you haven't spent ages on the phone trying to find out how much parts are. 
because most parts pieces are busy or something and you have to yeah. wait about five minutes and, you can and just, you've you got an extra five minutes to do something else and you've ordered the right parts and you've ordered the right parts yeah mm -hmm. so it's, it's got no problem there okay um, just before we sign off across the top there's a couple of other buttons in the technical data one I see tires is is winking at us there that's not actually live yet but I believe it's coming soon yeah uh, yeah it should be coming soon I give information on all tires um, it's going to be nothing now, so it's it's going to be a case of um, that's something that's going to come up, um, and all tyre information possibly is all going to come up for the cars and what sort of tyres. So, because some manufacturers say you must use this tyre, mm. but hopefully we can actually give you a list of other tyres and manufacturers you can use, which are the same spec. And pressures and so forth. That's it. Yeah. Dennis, thanks a million. Um, I know you've got to pack up and get off to Galway, but that was a really useful demonstration, and hopefully people who see it on the website will be interested. Um, welcome. We are offering a single month's free trial of the system for anybody. If you're a Top Part customer, there's every likelihood that Top Part will be subsidising the use of the system going yep. forward. Yep. So we'd encourage any Top Part customers to register for a free trial. Yeah, free trial. We can't go wrong, to be honest. Thanks, Dennis. That's right. You're more than welcome.